My name is Jeffrey Williams. I'm a working actor in New York City. I love what I do and i um, happy to be here today to tell you a little bit about Black Friday Subliminal. Okay. Carol, dear, sorry for what? For inviting me over for Thanksgiving dinner? It's been a while since I've seen you or my loving son. But when I read your text about the bun you had cooking in the oven, you know, the one that uh, mom used to make, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Yeah. And I heard that you have another bun cooking in the oven, one that just can't wait to get out. Isn't that right, little prince? How long you been not long, son, but long enough. When did I start acting? Must have been maybe 20 years ago. Tell you about Black Friday Subliminal and how I learned about the role. Well, I um, learned about the role from uh, Backstage.com. And uh, what I know about the film is that it it has um, a deep purpose of educating people while entertaining people. Um, it deals with uh, uh, family interactions, family uh, stressors, uh, family conflict, as well as um, delivering a message to people in general about uh, taking care of themselves. And I think some of the drama that I like, it's uh, you could be stubborn for a good purpose or stubborn for a bad purpose. And then there is consequences for each, as well as um, regret. Nobody is perfect. People have regrets. And how you use your regret to be a better person in the future is something what I think Daniel Hart tries to do in his family. And uh, it's pretty exciting. I know there's some supernatural parts to the film. Uh, and there's some straight reality. There's um, a lot of strong human feelings about the, in the film. And I, and I think the interaction between me and my son, I think it, it has a lot of... Uh, realistic uh, points, as well as my uh, movie daughter-in-law, um, who tries to be uh, a mediator for everybody. And uh, so it deals with people's past, people's present, and a possible future. I don't want to go into too much about the film, because I don't know how much of the plot to reveal. But I do feel that there's a happy ending. I don't know exactly how you get from point A to point B, but I think it's going to be interesting. I certainly enjoyed acting. I certainly enjoyed being around all the actors and all the producers. And I feel everybody was serious. Everybody wanted to do a good job. And at the end of the day, that makes you feel good no matter what you put into it. You feel everybody has given their all. Well, Mr. Hart is um, is a tough guy, and um, he uh, is a ex-policeman. He seems to have been not the greatest husband. He could have been a bit of a rake with the ladies. Um, he, though he loves his son, he neglected his son when he was younger. Uh, but he loves his son, and he loves his wife. Uh, he. Um, has lived through a lot. And his wife passing away from cancer and maybe not taking the treatment that was best. And maybe he didn't encourage her enough at the time. He has regret over that. And he certainly doesn't want that to happen in his son's life, in his son's marriage. Yourself mentally and physically for the part. Well, Mentally, I did a, uh, a lot, a lot of rehearsing at home. Um, I have a line learner app that I would um, play the various characters and speak to. I would uh, 
work in front of a mirror and uh, see how I looked when I delivered particular lines or how I reacted to somebody else's line. Um, I got a plenty of rest. I took it very, very seriously. Um, I felt one of the main things I wanted to do, because this was a very large role for me, um, I think it was um, Sally Field when she was playing Mary Lincoln and they asked her what she did on set. She says, I didn't sit with anybody on set. I went by myself and I stayed into character. And that's the most important thing that I think I, I did. I did miss out seeing some of the wonderful dailies that people love, but I just tried to stay into character and I really wanted to be Daniel Hart. I think the most challenging part of the film was interacting with my son when he was angry with me because um, he could be tough, you know, and I could be tough, but it had to have a beautiful uh, expression for, for what was going on. So how to have a certain anger, a certain rage that I might have and to also experience his, and meanwhile, have it look beautiful uh, and not get silly because he was a very serious actor. He was very intense, but I have an intense side also. Um, oh, I love being on set. I felt um, the producer really tried to make us comfortable. Um, there was a lot of respect given to me as an actor. Uh, the sets were magnificent. There were um, a beach front sets, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, but um, the various locations were, were beautiful and um, I felt the equipment that the producer had um, was top of the line and I felt that um, the directing was fine, that the producer, director uh, really cared about the project. He didn't get over the top, maybe, maybe once lost his temper, but other than that, he was uh, wonderful to work with. Describe what it was like working with Chauncey Henry. Um, it, was, it was good. Um, Chauncey Henry uh, amazed me with the amount of focus that he could have at so many things going on at the same time, like an octopus, you know? Uh, I, um, I was always able to get my point across to him, even though maybe sometime it took a little time for him to get back to me. I felt um, he wanted to give me what I needed as an actor. Um, I had a little time once when I was, uh, for some reason, got dry mouth. <laughs> he just said, get him some water. you know. And I felt really good about that because I didn't expect to get dry mouth. And, you know, I want to do a good job, and then I relaxed. And uh, I think Mr. Henry had one purpose, which was to uh, do something of quality and of meaning. And I also felt I was inspired that the bottom line with Mr. Henry wasn't just making money or getting his name in lights. He wanted to have a purpose of this film that was good, that meant something. And he wanted all of us to feel that we were producing something that was going to be useful to people. So that was, that was good to have him around. I think he knew what he was doing. And, um, you know, he was demanding, but not over demanding. You know, he wanted something nice. He, he was able to explain what he wanted from me as an actor. And uh, he learned to give. Uh, Coffee in the morning, that was a big thing for him. He was a new director, but he figured out how to give us coffee. After that, everything was wonderful. <laughs> Paul Campbell was a rock. Um, he was somebody who always was focused on what he was doing. And he really, he wasn't, he wasn't, he was, he wasn't, he didn't go off task once. You know, you felt like when you went to Paul, he didn't have any other thing going on in his mind but doing what was necessary to have the film come out right. Well, it was um, 
delicate in a certain way. I was trying to protect my grandchild to be, um, and I didn't like what she was um, doing by going along with her husband. Meanwhile, it is her husband, it is their child. Um, it was good. She, she reacted, I felt, um, accurately for the situation. Um, we were two professionals, I mean, uh, and she gave me the energy that I needed to keep going. She needed to be objectionable to me when she needed to be. And I needed to be somewhat respectful of the woman of the house. And uh, so how to have a delicate balance of, uh, it's not my wife, it's my son's wife. Meanwhile, I feel they were making a terrible mistake together. And I had to step into it. And she explained what she had to, to say about it. But I wasn't going to change because I had already had regret from my wife's passing and also had a lot of regret in life the way I didn't raise my son right. And I, I wanted her to not have regrets. And I'm the, uh, the oldest statesman there, elder statesman, and I thought, you know, my life meant something. My experience meant something. Meanwhile, she did care very much. She was in a very tough position being pregnant, her husband not doing well, and the interfering father. It's not uh, fun at Thanksgiving. What do I want audiences to take away from Black Friday subliminal? What I want them to take away is that there's two types of uh, anger. Anger on behalf of making something better. Um, and then there's anger because you're hurt that can get in the way of uh, doing the right thing. And I think also, um, being, um, being too obstinate. You can be obstinate. I was obstinate with, uh, with Heidi because I wanted something good to happen. I didn't want something bad to happen. But then you could be obstinate because you just don't want to take a treatment because you don't think it's going to help you, even though it will, without giving thought. And I think that in this film, it has a lot to do with really thinking about the choices you make and why you take them. And also how you use your regret. Because you live long enough, you're going to make mistakes. It's what you do with those mistakes, which means everything, I think. And you know, that's some of what I want people to take away. Be smart and don't let your own ego get in the way.